Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here today to do my top 10 worst video games of the 2010s decade. Yes, yes, I I play video games. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've never talked about it really before, but I said I would start doing some video game reviews this year. Because I really want to see if, if I can make them and if, if a lot of video game fans will watch. I, I know that I might have a lot of controversial opinions. But I, I ask you guys to keep in mind that I'm more of like a movie guy, a TV show guy. And so I'm reviewing video games in terms of cinematics, like the storytelling, all that kind of stuff as well. And, and also the gameplay, that's very important, and, and the effort put into it, of course, but I mean, since I have that, that movie type of review style, I'm reviewing it like that. So if, if there might be a couple of games on here that might really make you question whether you should watch me, but just, just watch, just watch and, and hear my reasonings, uh, and I have played a lot of video games in the 2010s decade, and it was very hard to rank them all because there were so many, and I just I did process of elimination for for both lists. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, my honor, my dishonorable mention actually is Battlefield One, and now I know right off the bat, boom, a lot of people love this game. Personally, it's a very mixed bag for me. I actually originally had it at number three, and I replaced it with another game I'll be talking about. But yeah, um, Battlefield 1, it, a lot of it feels very, very manipulated and constricted. And again, it's this culture we live in of let's make everything shorter. And oh, just because something is shorter means the quality of the story and the quality of everything is going to be better because we can focus more on that than making the game longer, making it more fun. And so, yeah, I mean, this campaign thing, ugh, ugh. I, I like some of the stories, but it's just, they're so short. Like, they're, I beat, I beat them all like an hour each. Like, that's just crap. And I, I hated the prologue. I, I get I get what they were trying to do, but it was very frustrating because it, it felt like I was kind of failing, like I, I was failing the mission, but they were doing it on purpose to have you get killed and show you how many soldiers got killed. But I just, I did not like this stuff. I actually thought that, like, they should have just picked one of these stories and then had that be the whole game. And expanded it and made it like a real story. But instead it just, it feels so lazy and cheap and manipulated. What I mean by manipulated is there's no freedom in what you're doing. It's all just, oh it has to be this way, it has to be this way. And I like some of the storytelling. I, there were some very uplifting, inspiring things here and there. But overall, yeah, I'm just not a fan of this game. And then you add in the multiplayer, which I've actually had a lot of fun with. But I have a lot of problems with the weapons. With the customization of weapons, uh, where you, you, uh, you can't really customize a lot about it. I prefer like in Call of Duty where you can add modifications and everything. I understand it wouldn't be accurate. But I, I don't really care. It's a game. It's a video game for F sick. And and also, there's a lot of weapons, a lot of maps, a lot of things that you can't play or do because you have to buy the DLC. And another thing is I hate DLCs. Especially nowadays, I hate DLCs. They always feel so cash grabby and so lazy. And, and they always feel like such a waste of money. and But th this time, it just that, that makes it feel more constrictive. Because this is an EA game. They are some uh, greedy bastards in EA. And, and it definitely feels that way in, in this game when you're playing it. 
it feels like you're just, I don't know, it just, it, it doesn't feel right. I just, I'm not a fan of this game. But I did have a lot of fun with the multiplayer. I like some storytelling, so yeah. That's my dishonorable mention. Now on to my number 10. The Walking Dead Season 2 by Telltale. Ooh, this is another mixed bag. Again, just because these games are on the worst doesn't mean they're terrible, terrible. Uh, it's just, I, I, I would avoid a lot of bad games. I would play games that I wanted to be good. And so, like, I'm not just reviewing everything. I don't just play everything. But, yeah. Walking Dead Season 2, I was so excited for this after the first season, which I loved. I, even though a lot of people say it's it's still very manipulative, it didn't feel like that the first time I played it. It, it, it gave me a lot of feeling, a lot of great storytelling. But with Season 2, oh, God. First off, they have a DLC that comes out before the game even comes out. It's about these 10 prisoners or something, and it's all about each prisoner escaping off of a prison bus and how they've uh, adapted to this world. And I actually kind of like this DLC, but I was questioning, where is this going to go? Because our main character is Samantha. And so, like, why are we playing as these different prisoners? Are they really going to be, like, a part of this big group with Samantha? Are we not going to get to play as her because she's a kid still? No. We get to play as Samantha. Oh, my God. Clementine. Oh, God. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Clementine. We get to play as Clementine. <laughs> I feel so bad for getting her name wrong because she's such a cool character. And... Right off the bat, I liked the first episode. There was some creepiness and some, some great stuff. I liked the thing with the, the best friend and her her protective father and having to sew up her own wound and having to do that as part of the game. That was cool. That felt very survivalist. It had a lot of a greatness to that stuff. But this story in general just felt all over the place to me. It just, there wasn't really one story to me. It, just, it felt like a bunch of different stories put together in one. There's this one story where they're all in this building and they're being taken hostage by this this guy named like Warren or something. This, this, this guy and, and they have to kill him and all this stuff. It's just, it, it's all over the place with this, this season. And I'm sorry I don't remember everything as accurately, but I've only played this game once because I was so just not impressed. And then they brought back Kenny. Kenny was an awesome character in Season 1. I liked him just as much as I did Lee. But when they brought him back, they made him into a villain, and they made you kill him. I actually thought that was very heartbreaking. I thought that was a great ending. But in general, I kind of wish that he would have stuck around and that he would have become the main character with Clementine and that they would have been the characters together going on adventures together. I really didn't like that he had to turn into a villain. It definitely feels very Walking Dead-ish, you know, where you get where you get someone who, who comes back or you, you get a character... And, and they just keep getting killed off, uh, the minor characters. But then at least they had the guts to kill off Kenny. I mean, I'll say that. It's just, I, I really wish he would have stuck around. Because season three is something that's coming up next. Number nine is The Walking Dead, A New Frontier. Ugh. This game, it does not feel like it is a part of the Walking Dead series. It feels very, 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 very weird how they're just suddenly creating this new story about this Latino guy and his brother and this family drama crap, the soap opera crap. There's characters from the actual TV show like Jesus, and then there's also Clementine whose character now sucks. Uh, her whole story is just trash. I hated everything with her. I just, I did not like this game's story. 
that being said, I had a lot of fun. I liked the the ending, uh, kind of, but it's just again, it's just it's so anticlimactic that you wait two years or so for a season and then you get this random shit and a new frontier. I still I enjoyed it. Uh, at the end, it's just not something I would ever play again. And in my opinion, it doesn't belong in the series of The Walking Dead. So my number eight is Prince of Persia, per, Prince of Persia, Forgotten Sands. Ooh, this game! I did not want to play this game. My brother, he used to be very overprotective, so he would rent really babyish things for me to do and play. And he and he rented this Prince of Persia game based on the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Very shitty movie to begin with. And then you make a movie game out of that. That's what I have to say about this game. Because it was so glitchy. It was just, there was so many glitches all over the place. And it felt like such a broken, unfinished game. <sighs> It was fun at some parts, but it was so overly hard. Like, there there would be these traps where there would be axes swinging back and forth, and it felt really difficult to get through that. And so my brother actually had to play it for me. That's how bad it was. There was actually this one part where I got stuck, and, like, you climb up buildings like Assassin's Creed, and but I just, I did not know where to go. I was just lost in this ugly... Uh, one-dimensional, beige-looking, awful-looking world. I just, I did not like this game. And it was, it was exactly like the movie. You know, you have the big fight at the end, and, and the, the big fight at the end is boring. It, it's very easy compared to the rest of the game, which is trash, too. Whenever you get to the boss and the boss is easy, that's always trash. And so I didn't like that, and... I just, I would never play this game again, and I wish I'd never played it to begin with. My number seven is Rage. <laughs> Rage is a game, a lot of people like this game, I think. It's not a hated game. I don't hate it as well. It's just, the trailer was so good. And that that's a, that's a common theme with games on this list is that you'll have a really good cinematic trailer, and you'll play the game, and you'll be like, <sighs> snooze, and that was exactly what it was like with this game. You had some great voice acting, you had some great graphics, some great gameplay, but the story was just so boring, and the, the game, the, it's just, it was not very fun compared to what it looked like in the trailer. I just, I was so disappointed. To this day, I've never finished it. It's, I have no desire to really play it. Uh, I, I don't even know if I'd like to watch it for free on YouTube. Like, if I'd like to go watch another person's playthrough. That's how much boring and sort of, like, uninterested I am in this game. This game is so uninteresting. And it's called Rage. And, like, there's all this the violence too it's just it's just, just so disappointing and it's not very fun but it it's playable i guess i mean i kind of like the feel of when you shoot uh, like the, how it feels and how it sounds got some great sound with the the guns but other than that yeah i just i don't like it i i'm usually a fan of zombie games post apocalyptic games but not not this one for some reason it's just not not very good. And next up, number six is Dead Island. Here we go again with another awesome trailer. That cinematic trailer with uh, the family, with with the little girl the, the, chasing the the mother. I I think if I remember correctly, out the window and just really heartbreaking. And, and them dying all together, and you see the picture of the family. That was so good, that trailer. That made me so excited. It it made me feel like, is this going to be like a groundbreaking cinematic experience? Is this going to be a, a really impressive zombie story? No. It's going to be a glitchy, piece of shit mess 
where you just, the game breaks, you step into new environments, and the environment builds itself right in front of you like it wasn't built already. There's so many glitches with this game. Uh, it's overly hard at some points to the point of where it just pissed me off. And I'm, I'm sorry, but this game, oh god. I can't even get started with this game. It starts off, and there's so many just... Oh, I have to go over to the suitcase, and I have to go inside the suitcase to pick up an energy drink, pick up an apple, and pick up a roll of tape. And then I have to go over there and pick up more apples and rolls of tape and energy drinks, and F that. F that for sure. This game is so trash. The zombies are glitchy. They're... They're hard to beat sometimes, especially in the later, because I would play on co-op just because it was so hard for me to play at that age, and just, ugh. I liked being able to kick, but sometimes that wouldn't work, of course, and this wouldn't work, and that wouldn't work, and just the story, too. Ugh, the story was just so boring. Snooze fest. This game is worse. Let me tell you something right here. The worst zombies, the worst zombies movies I've ever seen are Night of the Living Dead 3D with Sid Haig. Uh, rest in peace, Sid Haig. You didn't deserve to be in this piece of shit movie. And then also, uh, Survival of the Dead. Yeah, Survival. This game story is worse than those. That's gonna tell you something. The story is weird. Uh, the, the weapon, the weapons, they just break in two seconds. It's just, this game sucks. Number five, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Another fucking stupid game. Uh, this game I bought on opening day. I bought this on opening day because I love that trailer. That trailer was so good with, uh, with Kingpin and saying, like, we're gonna... We're gonna take out Spider-Man. He's a he's a, a criminal, and and you have all these new drones and and uh, things flying around looking for Spider-Man. You have Kingpin in charge of the city. I mean, that sounds like such a kick-ass game. Uh, no pun intended for something coming up later. <laughs> uh, it just sounded so good, and and I was really excited with Black Cat and Craven, and but then oh no. It's got to tie into the stupid fucking movie. And so, of course, they make it all about the movie, which sucked, too. They gave me free two tickets or whatever, and we saw that movie in an empty theater at 2 o'clock after school ended, and it sucked, just like the game. And they had the stuff in the game, all these glitches. You have Green Goblin Jr., uh, played by Dane Dehene, and uh, he got stuck to the side of the building, and I just beat him to death. And it was so boring and so trash. I love Spider-Man. He's my favorite Marvel character. I love Spider-Man video games. And this game somehow managed to piss me off to the point of where I just, I threw it away. I threw it the F away. Because then you have Electra, you have Carnage, you have all this stuff shoved into one game. And then, if that's not enough, they try to tell you that this game has great mechanics for web shooting. Because you can, uh, oh, you use the right joystick, or I mean the, the, the R2 and the L2 for right and left web shooting. Oh my god, it's realistic web shooting. How fucking original. And then... Uh, they try to uh, convince you that you have a uh, free reign to do whatever you want with dialogue and then they'll just force you to do the dialogue that they want you to do uh, oh you can choose the order and you have all this ripping off Arkham uh, Batman Arkham Asylum you have all that crappy mechanics with the combat you have this this arcade game where it's basically just Batman Arkham multiplayer. I mean, not multiplayer. Uh, what whatever it was called, where you would get the scenarios and you'd have to beat up all the enemies. Uh, just in general, God, I effing hated this game. And then you have the main actor for Peter Parker. He did a terrible job. I hated him. I hated his stupid voice. This isn't Peter Parker. This is trash. 
And and then you have Kingpin. He sucked. And then they thought this game was so good that after the credits of this game, they had a post-credits teaser for an Amazing Spider-Man 3. They had a stupid thing with Chameleon. And God, they really thought this game was that good? It was trash. Sorry for that, everyone. I just, that, that game pissed me off. Uh, next up, number four, Uncharted 4. Uh, <laughs> I, I bet everyone watching this was on my side until I said that. <laughs> I just, I did not like this game. It was so SJW, because you, cause you hear what happened with the agenda. With behind the scenes, they had these male characters, and they had this stupid feminist, uh, uh, game uh, character designer and she said why do these characters have to be male and so all these characters who were originally male had to all be changed to female to fit this game uh, designer's agenda and and so I hated that it just this game felt so wrong the story was so soap opera y and it was so irritating the way that like uh, Nathan is going to give up treasure hunting near the end, and he's he's like, no, who cares about the treasure? Let's just go home. Like, this is an Uncharted game. I don't give an F about you and your stupid family and all that dramatic family crap. I care about treasure hunting and kicking some stupid mercenary's ass, and then you have the villains in this game. You have Mary Sue Nadine, who can't get hurt. She literally can't get hurt i mean i would have been fine if she was female and if uh, and if she could get hurt though like when you fight her she literally physically cannot be touched she is a mary sue to the max and then at the end of the game she leaves the game because oh i'm gonna let you men stay here and fight because SJW, I'm going to let you men stay here and kill yourselves. I'm not going to save you. I'm not going to try to reason with you because you're men and you're going to stay here. Nye, nye, nye. And God, I hated her so much. She gets a happy ending. And I actually, I love the way this game looked though. This game looked phenomenal. And I loved the adventure elements. A lot of people complain that there was too much climbing. I, I agree with that. But I would have been fine with it as long as there was some more action to back up the climbing. The action in this game was very lackluster. In fact, I would say this game's action is the worst in the whole series. There's only one sequence of action that I really liked, and that was the uh, the one where you're being dragged by the car, or you're, you're running away from the car on the motorcycle. Oh yeah, you're on the motorcycle. Yeah, that whole sequence with the shooting at the car. That was really cool. I like that. But other than that, the action was trash. It's the worst in the series. Uh, this game is actually the worst in the Uncharted series of all that SJW shit. And then at the end of the game, uh, they have the stupid uh, epilogue where they tease it's going to be an SJW future where you're going to have his stupid daughter who had to be changed to female to fit their agendas. And... and 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 it's not the fact that she's a female, it's the fact that he was originally supposed to be a boy. And they changed it to fit an agenda. And then the whole epilogue, just in general, I hate this game, I hate the story of how he's a treasure hunter. I mean, they're treasure hunters. Who cares about the stupid realism? Who cares about your stupid family drama shit where you're like, oh... Treasure hunting is dangerous. I'm your wife and I'm really upset that you're treasure hunting. Like, who cares? I don't want... Okay, get go away then. Have her get killed so that we can have him become a treasure hunter again. I don't care. It's a video game. It isn't real life. The, it's, it doesn't work. And then you have his brother that they just suddenly introduce out of nowhere. And he's just this boring character. And, and, I mean, he's cool at some parts. But, I mean, just the fact that they have to explain everything about him and where he was in the first place. I hated that. Like, it's just all this explanation and all this, like, constant exposition dumping. Horrible. And, and then the end of the game, 
was trash. Again, I don't like the game. Sue me. My number three is Arkham Knight, Batman Arkham Knight. This game actually replaced Battlefield 1 after I played it again and sort of changed my mind. Uh, I feel bad about this game being in this list because I had a fun time playing it. I mean, the game, I mean, what is there to say? I could say everything that everyone else has already said. Uh, there's a there's a great part in the game where you get to pick up Harley Quinn and you, you get to see her up skirt. I mean, that's something to to play this game for. I mean, <laughs> and and but then you have all the shit in this game. You have the Arkham Knight, who is really cool, and the trailers again, really cool trailers all around. But it feels so rushed. It again, it's with the culture of making everything shorter and shorter. Of we have to make everything really sh short or else we're overstaying our welcome. All that BS. And so it feels very forced how Batman has to die. And oh, this is the game where Batman dies. And this is how he dies. And this is his end. Because we have to end it now. Or else it's, it, it's just because we're so lazy we can't come up with good stories. And, and so that pissed me off right off the bat how this is the last game apparently I, there might be a new game coming out I don't know hopefully there is because this ending was trash and and then we have the villains we have Arkham Knight who turns out to be Robin uh, with that stupid story where he you know becomes the Red Hood or becomes Arkham Knight it's just stupid it's just boring and lazy and and again melodramatic soap opera -y. And then you have the stupid boss fight with uh, Deathstroke, where you have to fight him in a tank, all the stupid tank shit in this game. The tank stuff is fun, at least. I mean, I can say that. It's fun. Uh, another thing, I like how you can go into the GCPD, and you can uh, look at artifacts from previous games, and then you can uh, take the glue gun. I really like that, actually. I mean, again... I don't hate this game, it's it's just there's a lot of disappointment to be had, and a lot of the combat, I like the combat, it, again, it's just they needed to put more in there, and the boss fights were all horrible, I didn't like any of the boss fights, I didn't like the ending, I, I, the thing with Barbara Gordon getting killed was predictable, it was predictable, everything about it was predictable, and lazy, and boring, and just but the opening was good. Again, I, I feel really bad for putting this game where it is. It's just it disappointed me so much with all these other elements of how we're ending the story now. It has to end now and all that stuff. I'm trying to think of anything. Oh, yeah, the DLCs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so many cash grabby DLCs. Oh, you have to pay $10 so you can do this and this. You have to pay $10 so you can go do this and this little stupid thing. And uh, and they have the stupid uh, Season of Infamy, that's what they called it, where you have the different villains and you get to go do little boring two-second missions where you hardly do anything. And, and, and then it's just stupid with, it could have been good too. I was excited. I was like, this sounds fun. We get to uh, do some missions and fight some of his other villains that aren't in this game. Like as if this game didn't already have enough awful villains who didn't have satisfying conclusions to their stories. <laughs> and then Scarecrow, he was completely shafted in this uh, game. Uh, just so many bad things. But one thing I'll say is I loved how the Joker narr narrated how he was sort of at Batman's side the whole game. I love that. That was so cool. Uh, great ideas, but then other really bad ones. My number two is Far Cry 4. This game, another game that had a great trailer... But, God, I hated this game so much. The story was boring. It was lackluster. Uh, it was everything we've already seen before. Uh, the villain, Pagan Men, he was awful. He looked really cool in the trailers. They were great voice acting. But, God, he was terrible in this game. 
and and then the main character boring more family drama how many video games nowadays is going to be about family drama about oh you're my brother but you're evil <laughs> and because i feel like that's all video games do nowadays is like oh you used to know me and now i'm evil or, or you used to know me and you have to make up for all the time that we were away from each other like in the uncharted 4 like all that kind of stuff is prominent in this game and then you have the typical thing where there's a factions here and there and you have to join the factions and you have to choose which side you're gonna fight with and all this crap and they and and surprisingly listen to this you can ride elephants did you just hear me? You can ride elephants. You can use elements for combat. And still it was trash. That's how bad this game is. Somehow it has all these great elements. All these great uh, promising elements. And then they're just wasted. They're just, they're just not utilized well. They're not satisfying. The story is bad. I finished the story. I was like, this is it? This lazy, like, five-minute story, this is it? And it was just so boring. The action was bad. This is worse than the third one. And I love the third one. But the third one had some bad boss battles. The boss battles in this game are even worse. I mean, how is that possible? The third one, again, the third one had these quick-time boss battles. And this game's boss battles were just disappointments. They were just, uh basically non-existent and basically like just you know fizzle fizzle firecrackers little tiny uh fire snake one of those uh firework snakes and that's it number one is kick ass the game wow god i hate this game the one thing I hate about it is that I spent ten dollars on it because I have never beaten this game it, I have no interest in playing it. I hate the vantage point, how you're you're up above the person and you're and it's in this like very controlled, manipulated state with the camera. I hate the fighting. I hate the controls. I hate the unsatisfying combat. I hate how the story is structured where it's just going through the movie's motions. And this game could have been something great. That's what pisses me off. They could have taken that great graphic novel and they could have adapted that story uh, 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 chapter by chapter, page by page, instead of just copying the movie and adding a few things here and there. This game was so bad, they made a sequel. That pisses me off even more. The fact that they had the guts to make a sequel to this trash game. And then you have the fact that it's basically no difference with each character. They're all, I mean, they all have different things to do, but all of their fights are so weak. All of their attacks are so minimal, and it feels like it takes forever to beat these villains. And to the point of where it was tough, it was tough to even play it because they would just pile on these stupid enemies who would just clobber you and clobber you. And, and, and not to make it sound like I hate this game because it's hard, but that is one of the factors because it's just so unplayable. It's ugly to look at, it's ugly to play, and it's ugly to beat. I mean, you can't play a game like that. That game is trash. So yeah, this game is such a missed opportunity. I am a huge fan of the Kick-Ass series. I have met Chloe Moretz in real life. Uh, and, and and she is really nice in real life, let me tell you. And and uh, also, I own all the kick-ass graphic novels, including the Hit Girl uh, prequel series. And and they just they, you know, they bastardized the kick-ass series with this horrible game. I'll never forgive them for what they did with this game. I hate the style. It's like an old arcade style type of game but it's not in a good way I just I hate this game hate it hate it hate it so that that's that's the end of my list Whew. that took a lot out of me doing this video was like a, 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 a oh my god 
<laughs> this bit of a, a dementor. Uh, this video was like a dementor just sucking out my soul. Just sucking out all the knowledge that I have about these awful games. It's so hard. It's so tough to sit here and have to remember these horrible experiences playing these games. And there were even more bad games that I played that just they didn't make the cut for this list. So yeah. If you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel to see my top 10 best video games of the decade and to see more game uh, m videos on video games. And yeah, I promise I won't be this weird, like jittery, like it's just, uh, I don't know, something's off with me today with doing videos. I don't know. So goodbye, everybody.